Hey everyone, it's Sam Kai from Enterprise DNA. Really cool scenario to run through today. And I think that in working through it, you'll you'll discover some, some well, you'll find some really interesting things around how to structure tables or, or uh, table functions inside of Power BI. Now the scenario is I wanted to show the last three sales of a customer only. Okay, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to show it by product. So I wanted to see a chart. So this is the visualization that I wanted is I wanted to be able to select any three, uh, any customer or, or grouping of customers. And I wanted to evaluate how much of the, those, the products, those last three products that they bought or last three sales uh, were from which products. Okay, so there's a few things you have to do there. If you think about it, because the first the first thing logically that you need to do, uh, and 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 also the selection could be adjusted to anything, right? So you could select it to any time frame, and it would automatically adjust. If you think what you've got to do there, we've got to work out dynamically based on any customer that we select, what were the last three products that they bought off us, or sorry, what were the last three sales that uh, that that they had with us. So we need to somehow rank the sales by per, by purchase date and say, okay, well, these are the last three. Then we need to work out, okay, what products were they and what were the total sales? Now, I'm just going to walk you through the formula because I think this is what where it's going to really uh, make it a little bit more sense. There, there is a little bit to it if you, think, if you have a, a quick look at it because there are actually a number of functions within functions. But again, this is why DAX is so immensely powerful because you can if you do understand these functions, put these all together and get amazing results just so quickly. Um, you know, to get this historically, I mean, there's just, it's not even possible to be able to do this in, in a tool like Excel, basically in my, in my own personal um, experience. So being able to throw these together quite quickly and create a visualization which is meaningful um, is, is really, really powerful. Okay, so what we had to do, let's just think back to a moment ago when I said, okay, well, what's the logic here? Well, we need to go and work out what were the last three purchases that, that any any particular custom, customer made based on the selection, okay? So we've selected on Anthony Parker here. Now, to go and work out, to go and work out these last three sales, well, we can use top end inside an iterating function. So what iterators do is they iterate through rows in a table. Well, instead of iterating through an actual table here, what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through a virtual table. And that virtual table is going to be determined by some ranking, and that's what top end does. And so we're going to go and find the three last sales, and that's what descending here does, based on purchase date. Okay. And so what I've done, though, is within any particular um, context that we might be in, I've created a table of just all the purchases that were made. Okay, so when I select a customer, we iterate through every single purchase that that customer has made, we evaluate the purchase date, and then rank the purchase date via this descending from latest date to, to the first date they purchased off us, and then what top end does is it then returns um, the, the, or it returns a virtual table of only the last three and then we iterate through those three rows and count up the sales of all those three rows. Now, the one thing that is a little bit tricky, the one thing that is a little bit tricky, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to put this one as wrong, and I'm going to take out this calculate table, and you'll see the issue. You'll see the problem. I'll just push enter. Now, if I go and drag this into this table here, you'll see, you'll see, you will see that, and I'll just do a quick bit of formatting. You will see that we get results for every single row in this particular table, okay? But you'll see down the bottom here that the total is actually correct. So this is the correct one, right? And the top, but the total on this one is actually correct. Now this is where having a really deep understanding of context is actually is very very key. Now, why do you think that this this result is actually showing up? Well, the reason it's showing up is because every single product is filtering on this on, in, in this particular result, right? So if a product is selected, what happens is that we go and run this logic. We go go and find the last 
three purchases uh, for this particular product okay but then what we're finding is that this is all of these products are, are evaluating um, to within this table right so we're always counting them up so if for example I selected say product 5 you'll see that this is always this is going to have a rank of say 1 because this is the only one in the context and so it's always going to be evaluated in this table and we're always going to count up the total sales so what we need to do is we need to wrap this summarize inside of a calculate table we need to somehow remove the context of the product in this particular result so that we go and evaluate through every single product that is for sale in this select time period and we rank based on all of those products all of those sales that are made over that time period now if we don't have this in here every single one of these is going to evaluate into the top three because there isn't enough sales um, there isn't enough sales for it to ever be over three in this particular data set and so we need to somehow evaluate through this entire so you see this table at the side here i put this here for a reason we need to evaluate through this entire table versus one that is always filtered down at the down at this sort of level and the way we can do that in this particular context is by wrapping this summarize inside of a calculate table and removing the product uh, product context on the result and then what it is doing it's evaluating this entire um, to this correct result is evaluating this entire table it's coming down to the end here and it's saying okay well these are our last three sales 22nd of um, June 7th of March 27th of August and then it's counting up these particular these three particular sales and so product 34 you'll see down here product 34 is 4364 and so on and so forth and then this is how also it will and then dynamically we can select any particular customer and it's always going to update for us okay i don't want to go too much further there but because there's, there's a lot there and this is this is advanced okay this is um i should have said that at the start this is, this is certainly an advanced tutorial but hopefully you can see by combining all of these things we can actually find some pretty cool insight really i mean this is some seriously seriously cool insight if you think about it being able to very quickly uh, see what our last three sales were by product and then we could put these into a visualization you know maybe maybe this is sort of like a last week dashboard or last month dashboard and we only really care about you know when we're diving into our customers you know what were the last three products they bought of us yeah you know, is that different to historically what, what you know they might be buying lower price products versus higher price products you know these are you know these are really great insights that can um, you know determine good actions so hopefully you got a lot of out of this tutorial and and can implement some of these techniques now there's the, the things to sort of I would say um, review is certainly obviously you've got to have a really good understanding of some X top end is a fantastic function uh, if you need to do any type of ranking in a dynamic way calculate table is a another amazing function if you can really truly um you know this is this calculate table is actually a function i didn't focus on enough when i started learning dax um, but if you can get a really good understanding of what you can do with calculate table it is just incredible the amount of great analysis you can do and how clean your formulas can become so certainly spend some time on that okay all the best hopefully uh hopefully you um, learn a lot during this one and uh, if you do like the content, certainly throw the video a like. Really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Heaps of great stuff coming out on Power BI very soon um, and uh, a long time into the future. So hoping to get that to you as, as soon as it comes out. Okay, all the best.